Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2017-2018 Teacher Workshop Series. Today we're going to be working on number 27 on the new general curriculum math subtest. And number 27 involves functions. And I thought I'd do today is I'd start with a slide on functions and talk about what a function is in math because in order to answer number 27 you need to have a clear idea of what makes up a function. A function in math describes a relationship between two variables, an x and a y. And we're going to consider that x here um, are inputs. So our x is on the horizontal axis are the inputs. And the y's are going to be on the vertical axis. Those are the outputs. And in order for a graph to be a graph of a function, for every input there has to be one and only one output, meaning Whatever x is here, let's say x is 1, when x is 1, there has to be a corresponding y value and only one corresponding y value. So for every input of x, dot, 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 there's got to be a, a corresponding y output. So if x is 2, y has got to match up with only one y output. Now, this works for linear equations. Whatever x is here, it's going to correspond with a corresponding y output there. And it works for all other functions, like not only linear, but also quadratic. For example, if x here is 2, that 2 is going to correspond with some y value here. And for every input, there will be only one output. It works for a cubic as well, trigonometric as well, all these right here, for every input of x, there's an output of y. For every input of x, there's one and only one output of y. Now, on the exams that you're going to see, you're, you're really going to see on the elementary school level, mostly linear, maybe one or two quadratics or absolute values. These other ones here, trigonometric, cubic, inverse, they're going to be saved for another test, middle school, high school. But the gist is always the same. In order for it to be a function, every input can only have one output. Now, there's a real quick way of determining if a graph is a function, because not all graphs are functions. Some graphs, when you put an x in, it has two outputs. So this strategy is designed to help identify those ones that have two outputs. But, but here's how it goes. It's called the vertical line test. For each one of these graphs right here, you draw a vertical line. And if that line intersects the, the graph in only one place, all right, and we could do it on this linear one a couple times, there's our line there, it only intersects once, then it's a function. All right, same thing with this one right here. We draw the line, it only intersects once, once, the, the line only crosses these graphs once, once, once. There's no place on any of these uh, graphs here. It doesn't matter what it is, even, the, even this weird looking tangent fu uh, function here. There's no place where we, when we draw the vertical line that line intersects a graph at two places. If it intersected at two places then this wouldn't be a function. So since it only intersects in one place it's a function. Here's an example of a graph that where it is not a function where it intersects in two places. Let's say we had a graph of a circle and when we do our vertical line test for an input here, this is our x, right? For this input of x, y could either be this value here or a negative y value here. So in this case, for the graph of the circle, one input gets you two possible outputs, two, two places where the, the line crosses the graph. So a graph of a circle is not a function because it doesn't meet that definition. A function represents a relationship between two variables where every input only has one output. Now, let's take this insight and go to number 27. Number 27 from the general curriculum exam reads like this. Which of the following graphs represents y as a function of x? And it's a very common type of question that they give on a lot of different elementary and middle school exams, where they give you four graphs, and they ask you which one of these graphs, a, b, c, or d, is a function? And what we're going to do is we're going to use that vertical line rule. We'll take A first. We draw the vertical line. If the line intersects the graph in two places, like for example A, it intersects here and here. 
we would say that a is not a function because one input has two possible outputs. So we cross it out. Let's go to uh, let's go to a d here. D, we draw the vertical line. Look, for this input of x, there's there are two possible outputs of y. One, two. D is not a function either. What about c? Well, c. Look at c. C is a little hard to read, but but when x is this negative value here, remember this is our x is here. When x is this negative value, it has an infinite amount of y possibilities, meaning when x is like negative whatever, negative, uh, negative, let's say negative 1, it could be an infinite amount of positive y outcomes or an infinite amount of negative y outcomes. c is not a function either. Now let's go to b. b matches up with the rule. For every input of x, it corresponds with one output of y. No matter what the input is, it only has one output. Even if it's a negative input, it only has one output. And if we drew the lines here, the vertical line rule, you would see that it's only intersecting one time for each one of these. So team, the strategy, whenever you're given a question on which one of the graphs is a function, draw the vertical line. The ones where the line intersects more than once, they're not functions. Cross them out. The graph where the line only intersects once is your function. Team B is the answer. All right, team, I hope you enjoyed this video on functions and how to identify a graph of a function. Stay tuned for more. This is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Have a great day. Take care. Team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Academy. Welcome to the 2017-2018 Teacher Workshop Series. This year we're holding workshops in math, science, English and history, early childhood education, foundations of reading, ESL and SEI. These are hands-on workshops designed to help teachers pass their teacher certification exams. I encourage you to check them out. We're holding them in Massachusetts, New York, North Carolina, California, New Hampshire, Vermont, Connecticut, and a couple other states. I encourage you to check out an upcoming workshop. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care.